Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to the SaaS integration presentation by Versa Network. My name is Pierre Bourdiol and I'm a systems engineer. Um, I will have the pleasure to walk you through this presentation, so let's kick start. So first of all, let's highlight a couple of facts uh, before uh, getting into the details. So. Um, as we understand, more and more of the end-user applications um, are being served uh, from the cloud. And from the figure we, we, we have, uh, cloud-based workload-related traffic represents 50% plus of the total enterprise traffic, and that will keep growing. Um, we also know that through 2022, growth in enterprise IT spending for cloud-based offerings uh, will be faster than the growth in traditional non-cloud IT offerings. Um, Backholding traffic then to a centralized internet exit, uh, being your typical uh, data center, um, just to be alpine to uh, internet, um, is no longer uh, relevant. Um, it's expensive. It prone to latency and other impairments, and it will ultimately result um, in some user uh, experience degradation. Um, as uh, shown in the below diagrams, uh, where we can see that on the left hand side, uh, the Office 365 traffic requested by the end user uh, is being thrown through the central hub. That will result in a higher round trip time as a minimum compared to the call flow, which is shown on the right hand side of that slide, uh, providing a more direct access. Um, we also would like to highlight the fact that, as we all know, that DNS resolution um, is the key to make this scenario happen. And this is uh, this DNS resolution will be the one dictating the path for the subsequent HTTP flows uh, from which uh, contents will be served. So let's take a minute to review uh, some call flows with and without um, DNS uh, split proxy capability uh, within the local SD1 branch. DNS resolution will then, um, once done, return a list of IP addresses uh, to the end user for sending the subsequent uh, HTTPS flows in order to retrieve the content. Um, Typically, uh, enterprise DNS uh, is generally centrally located uh, as well. This is a consequence of you know, this centralized internet access architecture, which is being used, and uh, it was very uh, convenient to host uh, the corporate DNS within that central location. Um, as described below, uh, we can see that uh, the corporate DNS is going to be providing resolution for both uh, internal uh, domain name as well as external domain names. And um, using such architecture uh, as illustrated by the below call flow that we will just see in a minute, uh, will likely result in selecting a suboptimal server uh, for providing the content uh, to the end user. So um, the DNS settings for that uh, corporate user is, of course, the corporate DNS server. Uh, which can be provided you know, either by um, an explicit proxy configuration or by using a PAC file, if it's more convenient. So what's going to be happening is that uh, to get uh, access to its Office 365 uh, content, this user will send this DNS request to the corporate DNS, which, which will subsequently uh, forward or redirect it to a global DNS, unless it has that information already cached. Um, and likely the IP address that or the list of IP addresses this user will get returned is going to be um, an Office 365 uh, location that is uh, closest to the uh, global DNS from ISP3 in that case, thus uh, resulting uh, in the selection of such a suboptimal server and uh, which will um, come up with a higher round trip time. 
Now let's have a look at the same call flow, but having enabled um, now DNS split proxy uh, within the branch one site uh, SD1 device. Uh, please note that DNS settings on end user laptop uh, does remain the same as previously. So it is uh, basically pointing to uh, corporate central DNS server, again, using either um, an explicit proxy configuration or pack file. This time we have um, the DNS split proxy enabled on the SD1 device that will allow to select the most appropriate DNS resolver and this on a per FQDN or URL basis. And in turn, this will result in the selection of the most appropriate server to deliver the contents. And that will basically uh, dramatically improve the end user experience. So now the end user is requesting the same Office 365 content, but this time the DNS split proxy is configured to intercept uh, all of the Office 365 uh, DNS resolution. And it will basically redirect that DNS resolution to a local global DNS server, ISP1 in that case. And this will return a list of IP address of server IP addresses within the same region as the user. And the content will then now be served by an optimal server for that end user. Now that we have seen how DNS resolution influence server selection, um, which will provide a first improvement to end user experience, um, a branch is likely to have multiple local internet breakout uh, as well as one or more centralized internet accesses uh, to choose from in order to get the requested content delivered from that optimal server. Um, this is where um, SAS SLA monitoring uh, comes into play and each um, branch site will be able to create a SAS SLA pass map, as I like to call it, um, where uh, packet loss and latency are measured uh, through all available um, internet accesses, being the local ones or the centralized ones. Um, the branch will then uh, leverage that information. Of course, it will refresh it uh, as, it's, as the SLA probes toward the SAS application are continuously um, sent. And it will, as I said, it will be able to leverage that information in order to pick uh, the most uh, relevant or compliant tasks based on whatever SLA uh, profile is attached to um, applications or group of applications. Enabling local internet breakout um, does require activation of security capabilities within uh, each local site and SD1 branch. Um, we, we think this, this is quite an important aspect to have uh, such a built-in capabilities that it will drastically um, simplify uh, the branch architecture. Um, this, is, this native security built-in capabilities is a must because um, basically this is the flip side of ubiquitous uh, internet connectivity, which does expand um, the attack surface on the local uh, branch site. Um, you also want to make sure that uh, those capabilities have the required granularity in order to um, allow the selection of SaaS application requiring optimized performance. You may not want to have all your SaaS application being uh, locally uh, breakout. Um, you may want some of them being steered um, through the regional hub for additional uh, inspections. You want also be able to um, uh, select which SaaS application uh, does require secure breakout or not. Uh, what we mean by that is that some application you may want to bypass um, the NG firewall or UTM capabilities enabled at the local branch site because those are trusted applications uh, like uh, Office 365. Uh, teams, uh, for example. So now let, let's focus a little bit on, on integration of that architecture and um, of the different um, 
capabilities we have previously highlighted. And the, the main focus here on that slide is going to be integration with cloud-based uh, security proxy, um, the like of uh, Zscaler, Symantec, Prisma, um, as well as also um, in-house HTTP proxy. Uh, basically, the same applies for, for the, the later as well. Um, um, and typically, um, in-house HTTP proxy tends to be uh, centrally uh, deployed. Um, this is a consequence of uh, central, centralized internet access uh, being used. Um, but what we can see is that uh, also the behavior depends on endpoint configuration. Uh, we slightly touched on that previously, depending if you're using a pack file with or without exceptions or an explicit proxy. But in, in any case, um, we, we see in a very consistent behavior when it comes to uh, endpoints uh, leveraging either uh, you know, a cloud security based proxy or an in-house HTTP proxy is that, of course, they generally configure to send both DNS and HTTP request toward the proxy um, except that for HTTP flows um, they're going to be uh, they're going to be encapsulated uh, using an HTTP connect method uh, which does bring an additional requirement there because uh, basically um, the initial HTTP request is uh, is obscured by the additional HTTP connect uh, encapsulation so that requires basically an HTTP or web proxy uh, uh, being enabled on the local SD1 branch, which will allow to uh, identify the correct application and decide uh, if it goes through local internet breakout, maybe directly bypassing the, uh, the web security proxy, if there is an exception uh, authorized and configured, or if it needs to go through uh, um, the cloud-based proxy, also the internal proxy as well. So, um, and also uh, we, st we are still able to leverage the same capabilities as previously discussed. So being able to select uh, the best performing paths through different cloud security proxy. And in order to do that, um, we're going to be uh, basically combining DNS web proxy, SD1 policy, and SAS monitoring capabilities. So we can select the first pass and should basically uh, impairments being detected toward that SAS application through the cloud security proxy, uh, we will be able to redirect um, using an alternate pass providing uh, the requested um, uh, SLAs. Last but not least, let's talk about uh, historical reporting and uh, visibility. Two key requirements provided through uh, your SD1 uh, analytics solution, um, which will uh, allow you to answer questions like, um, why is my SaaS application performing badly? Or even better, why was my Teams application uh, performing so badly? Um, in order to come up with such uh, application ranking, um, the system should leverage uh, multiple inputs. Um, first one, we talked about it earlier in this presentation, uh, come, is provided through um, SAS SLA monitoring, uh, the likes of uh, latency and packet loss. And those information should be combined uh, with uh, traffic related attributes. Uh, taking TCP, for example, uh, one can think about um, retransmission, uh, on check, uh, and so on and so on. Visibility. Um, is another capability uh, provided through the analytic system and it will help you answering questions like which applications are using the one links but ultimately um, that information should be leveraged to fine-tune or enhance uh, the implemented SD1 policy. So making sure that independently of how critical a particular application is, uh, it, uh, it is steered um, toward the most appropriate or relevant path. We are reaching the end of our presentation. It's time to conclude. Um, two main points I'd like to, uh, to bring up. Uh, as we've seen, in order to um, 
have a successful SaaS integration, um, it's a little bit like a recipe, and you need uh, a couple of ingredients uh, to make it tasteful. Um, hopefully, um, throughout that presentation, you have now a better of the understanding of the reasons uh, behind all of those uh, different components, which are namely DNS proxy, web proxy, SD1 policy, NG firewall, UTM capabilities, and historical reporting and monitoring. Um, the second point is, in order to have a seamless uh, integration, um, it's an end-to-end -end picture that you need to have. Um, it's not only about the SD1 solution itself, but it needs to take into account uh, additional components that are part of your uh, ecosystem. Um, on-prem web proxy, cloud security proxy, um, what about the endpoints, um, how are they configured, how are they going to be behaving, and, and all that in order to achieve one main goal, which is making sure that whatever um, the SaaS application we're trying to reach, we're going to be selecting the best, best performing pass. And finally, on behalf of the whole Versa Networks team, I would like to thank you all for attending this presentation. Um, wishing you a great seminar. Um, should you have any further questions, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Bye-bye.